Gajuino is the ultimate espresso machine upgrade that improves your workflow by automating a lot of your machine's functionality. It's a project started by Zerobit and it's run by several passionate community members entirely for free. The install process is relatively straightforward and their documentation is very thorough. However, there is so much outdated content out there. I myself am at fault here as the build log I put up a year ago was still on the old version running Arduino Nano. I've learned a lot since then and while everything worked out in the end, there are a lot of things I wish I did and did not do. So in this video, let's explore how I would personally approach building a Gajuino if I was starting from scratch in 2023. Take note, this is not a build log. I am not going to go over each and every component as all that information is available in the documentation already. This is more about the three main decisions you have to make in doing a project like this. The video is broken down into the following sections. First off, what machine should we use? The second is, what chip should we use? The Arduino Nano or the STM32? And the third is, what component layout should we follow? The Lego component layout or opt for a PCB? And lastly, I'm gonna go over what I learned and my personal advice. Before we proceed, I'd like to mention once again that I am not a part of the Gajuino team. Everything I discuss in this video are only my personal thoughts and opinions as a community member. It goes without saying that any modifications done to your machine is your responsibility. And so with that out of the way, let's proceed. This one was what started it all. Well, in the Gaja Classic line at least. This machine was built in Milan. Even though it has the smallest boiler out of all of them with only 80 ml of capacity, Gaja knocked it out of the park immediately by including a big heating element, enabling it to get warm enough to pull shots in just a few minutes. They opted for a 58 mm portafilter, which is perfect as it's the industry standard so you can swap out baskets if you wanted to. They included a three-way solenoid valve out of the gate, which allows the machine to either direct the flow of water from the boiler to the brew head or brew head to the drain port, allowing the machine to purge excess pressure straight to the drip tray. The machine had an OPV or an overpressure valve, which regulated the brewing pressure. And while it did come out higher than preferred, it was easy enough for modders to lower it to nine bars. Because of the small boiler and lack of steam power, they opted for a Panarello style steam wand to make it easier for consumers to steam milk. Of course, diehard home baristas figured out a way to make this even better by replacing it with a stainless steel wand. The second version, which we're just gonna call the Gaja Classic 2015, was the most notorious out of all of them. They moved the production out of Italy. They changed some of the machine parts and pieces like the steam wand. They also replaced the traditional three-way solenoid valve with a mushroom valve, which greatly hindered the machine's ability to maintain consistent pressure. Things really started to go downhill from here as it appeared as if the company wanted to focus on cutting down on costs, which affected the quality of the Gaja Classic. In a time when all seemed lost, rumors started going around that Gaja might be working on releasing another version of the Gaja Classic, something that stayed true to the original. Well, in 2019, they did just that and made, in my opinion, the best version of the machine. They moved to a smaller capacity aluminum boiler once again. They completely removed the Panarello wand and instead included a stainless steel steam wand. There are a few other changes I won't go over, but to sum it up, it seemed as if Gaja listened to the feedback and decided to take the old version and make it even better. If you're doing the Gajuino, the latest iteration of the Gaja Classic, otherwise known as the Gaja Classic Pro, is in my personal opinion, the best option because it minimizes the risk of something going wrong. Gaja really went above and beyond for the latest one, so you don't really have to swap any parts out. With that said though, there is a certain charm to modifying the OG Gaja Classic. Sure, you're going to need to do some maintenance and potentially replace parts as it's an older machine, but hey, that's what makes these projects fun, right? I'm going to be honest, I'm thinking of building another Gajuino using an OG frame, 
So stay tuned as I might make a series on that. For now, I never owned one, so I can't comment on it. If anyone watching has the OG version, please leave a comment down below and share your experience. The version I would least recommend is the 2015 version, only because of the stuff you need to replace, as you potentially have to upgrade to a three-way solenoid valve, and you also have to upgrade the steam wand to make the most of the machine. But once again, there's also something appealing about running a semi-OG machine <laughs> that has that notable huge stainless steel boiler that carries almost double the capacity. Anyway, let's proceed. We need to decide what chip we want to use. We have two options, the Arduino Nano or the STM32 Black Pill. From my experience, the Arduino has a slightly simpler installation process, but is no longer being updated. Hey, that could be a good thing if you value reliability over anything else, but for most people, I'd recommend the STM32. I initially did the install using the Arduino Nano, then eventually upgraded to the Black Pill chip and let me tell you, the Gajuinu team is truly pushing the fringe on what could be done with a coffee machine modification. In my opinion, it all comes down to incentives. The Gajuinu team is not incentivized by monetary rewards, so they aren't afraid to innovate. They don't have to cut corners here and there to make quotas. People contribute to the Gajuinu project simply because they want to make the best coffee machine out there. And in my opinion, the STM32 version encapsulates that perfectly. It feels like you're working with a much higher capacity boiler thanks to its automated boiler routines. It feels like your machine has integrated scales thanks to its predictive scales feature that allow you to see flow readings and even enable stop and dose. You now have profiles similar to the decent espresso machine. So yeah, my vote goes to the STM32. You previously had to deal with figuring out a workable layout for all the components and wiring in and around the machine. But now there's a full Lego enclosure, which is just a huge deal given the very limited space you can work with in the incredibly small machine chassis. There's even a full PCB which has most of the components soldered, but you'll have to join a group buy for that, which takes some time. If you decide to go for the LEGO version, aside from the wait time, you also have to do quite a bit of soldering. Most issues come from having a bad connection, and there is no fast way for you to debug which part is at fault. So I highly recommend learning how to solder properly, as it will prevent a lot of headaches down the line. The PCB route, on the other hand, has most of the components already soldered onto a single board, which is going to save so much time and effort. The only drawback is, it's, it's not really easy or cheap to build this custom PCB out, so the community orders this through a group buy. Don't just join the Discord and sign up to the waitlist immediately though. There are people spending time and effort organizing for this custom PCB to be built, with the organizer shouldering most of the upfront cost, so only sign up if you are 100% sure you are going to participate. All right, so after building a Gajuino and then upgrading it to SEM32, this is what I learned and this is my personal advice. If there's one thing you take from this video, it's that you should not be lazy. I already mentioned this earlier, but a bad connection is what causes most of the issues in doing a build like this. Once again, I am guilty of this. On my old build, instead of soldering all the wires, I opted to use the built-in DuPont connectors. And while it worked in the beginning, a few issues started to arise when I upgraded to the STM32, which took a whole week for me to fix. Please learn from my mistakes. Don't be lazy and learn to solder properly. If however, you still encounter issues in your build, just calm down. Even though it's tough, as there is no way to identify for certain where the issue is coming from, remember that there are usually three places where things go wrong. Number one, either the wiring is bad, so double check that the connections are correct and they're soldered properly. Number two, the software or software version is bad, so double check that you're on the correct branch of software for either the chip and the next gen screen as well. Third potential issue is the hardware may be bad. So order backup components just in case you need to swap them out later. Treat those three things as your checklist when something isn't working right. From this point forward, it's tempting to just jump in the Discord and ask questions immediately. But remember, whatever questions you have, have probably already been asked before. The Gajuino's true power lies in its community. 
So be a good community member. First of all, search if your issue has already been encountered. Maybe a fix already exists. If you really have to ask a question, create a ticket and give as much information as possible. Remember that these people are here for the love of coffee, so please be patient and be kind. Once you have everything working, come join the showroom. Here, people showcase their machine's first start or their first pull of espresso after the project is complete. Even though I've used my Gajuino almost every day for the past few months now, I still remember how magical it felt the first time it worked. And in my opinion, that sense of accomplishment is why you would take on a project like this in the first place. I hope this video gave you an insight on how I would build a Gajuino in 2023. I've already recorded quite a few videos of me using the machine. So feel free to click the video above to watch how I pull a shot with my Gachowino. Mm -hmm.